Every year we have the obligatory jokes that the uh, we come here to walk Camino and that everybody gets on the electronic walkway coming out of the airport. <laughs> Well, Buen Camino Pilgrims, uh, I have just arrived in Madrid uh, just a couple of hours ago. Um, took the train into the Atocha station. I'm going to be taking a train uh, on the Atocha from the Atocha station to Lagroño in about an hour or two. Um, so, I just I have not been to this south side of Retiro Park. Um, so, I am looking uh, just checking out some of. Uh, the south side of Retiro Park and um, and killing a little bit of time before I have to make my way over to the train station. So um, I'm going to start walking from Lagronio tomorrow, and um, I have a kind of a long day tomorrow. I think it's 28 kilometers um, tomorrow. That's somewhat out of necessity. I think there's only like two stops um, out of Lagronio on the entire day. So kind of you kind of have to go a long day tomorrow, um, and the weather is not going to be too bad tomorrow. So I'm not worried too much, too worried about uh, that 28 kilometer day. Um, but then I'm gonna walk for 11 days. I don't really have a stopping point. Um, I would love to be able to get to Lyon, but that would be 300 kilometers in like 11 days. And that's not how I'm gonna do Caminos. And that is exactly what I ended up doing. I'll tell you more about that as kind of the videos go along. Hello there, pilgrims. Uh, this is my uh, first day of walking. I am just out of Lagronio. Uh, I've been walking for, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. Um, quite a bit of city walking this morning, of course, because Lagronio is a big city. But I am traveling um, about 28K today. There's only one town, I think 13K or something like that. So. That's much longer than I normally walk, um, only because when I have a group with me, um, that would be far too far for a group to go. Usually I have to make sure that you're going no farther than, than the uh, slowest or most injured person. So, so usually I don't get to go this far. So I'm excited about that. And today's kind of cool. Um, I think it's gonna get up to like 85 or something like that today, but there's been, um, some really hot days so far before I got here and at the end of this week it's going to get up above the 90s in Fahrenheit so it's going to get quite a bit hotter um, so anyway today should be a nice day um, gonna uh, make a slow climb at the first half of the day and then the second half of the day will be a descent down into I believe that's San Jara um, anyway so looking forward to a good long day on Camino, um, but it will probably be uh, a bit sparse out here. Um, uh, interesting, last night at the Alberga, I um, really 
only talked with a few pilgrims. There were some language barriers. There wasn't a lot of English in the Albergo last time. Um, I did just have a good conversation, joking around with some young Spanish guys from Barcelona uh, who are making Camino together. Um, and uh, so we chatted for a bit, but, but for the most part, I haven't met a whole lot of folks in part because um, there's just not a lot of Americans out here. There's not a lot of English, uh, native English speakers out here. There's plenty of Europeans on the way. I've already seen quite a few. So anyway, I will update you soon. Wanted to give you a little bit of update. I'm about halfway through my first day, my first uh, 28K day, which is a pretty good day for me. Um, by the way, this is, you can see I'm walking through this vineyard, um, which is really beautiful. And I'll go the other way too, so you can see that, um, which is really beautiful, but I got a bit of wind. So we'll see how the, how the sound does with this and hopefully you'll be able to hear me okay. Um, but today I, I wanted to just kind of um, give a, a little bit of uh, context of why I'm out here. It's kind of an odd trip. Um, I am starting in a town, Lagronio, where my wife and I left off um, in 20, 2016. We came and walked from St. John to Lagronio. And, um, and so, I picked up there because this is a section of Camino I've never been on um, and want to be able to see it. But unfortunately, I'm not even going to get to the next spot, which is um, which I've never walked to, which is Leon. So there'll still probably be a couple days before Leon that I don't ever that I don't get to see on this trip. Um, but I really felt I needed to be here, um, and I imagine. For some of the same reasons that some of you are really wanting to be on Camino. You know, this has been a long 18 months. I was supposed to make a pilgrimage to Rome in March of last year. And that trip was canceled just a couple of weeks before, maybe only a week before we left. That was really disappointing. I've been wanting to go to Rome for a long time had a group of great students who were going to go and thankful for our honors college director who invited me to go and then we didn't get to do that and then uh, I was planning in late August I thought the summer uh, as COVID really went down last summer I thought well maybe maybe I'll be able to make Camino with a group of friends there were just four or five mostly they were alumni of my previous trips and we we're gonna go and walk some of this section right here uh, last August and of course that was terrible planning there was no way that 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 trip was gonna happen but we thought maybe it was possible at least I thought and then um, and then I was gonna uh, this May uh, a few months ago would have been another trip for my students on a normal schedule but I knew quite a long time ago that that wasn't going to happen. So again, I started putting together um, a group of people who were not students, just friends and alumni and others who would make the trip in May. And of course that didn't happen. We knew in about March or April that we weren't going to get to take that trip. So I've been trying to get back to Camino. Um, and then when uh, they opened up in June. I'd kind of already blocked out this time with hopes that I'd be able to make Camino this during this block. Um, and I'm thankful that uh, I was able to to get out here, work it out with work, and work it out with my family and, and so on to come for this time. I think I really needed it, not only because COVID um, has just been, I think, miserable for most of us. Um, especially for those of us that are extroverts and love to travel and all these things. And, and that just hasn't been possible um, during this year. So that's been really hard, um, but I'm thankful to be back. 
And I think one of the reasons is I've learned that this rhythm of walking, just being out here and taking the steps and talking with people, it's become a part of my life now. And it's spiritual pilgrimage, not because the journey is so challenging or anything like that, or even maybe um, is any more of a holy place than any place I could be back home. But for me, imagine for many of you that have made pilgrimage before, this place has become sacred because of the years now that I've been spent um, praying out here and so many other pilgrims have been spent have spent their time praying out here and and so it's become a holy place and for me uh, more than anything it's become a, a retreat a way of life that once a year I pattern this time uh, to be able to come out here and, and make retreat for a bit um, and be able to meet people and walk and sweat a little and walk in churches and so anyway a little bit of self-reflection this morning um, as I'm thankful to be back on the way. I was expecting um, this morning to be a little more remote. Um, I thought it would be kind of through fields, but I guess I didn't pay attention to how large uh, Navarrete and, uh, and Legroño are, because they kind of run together. It's almost like walking through one town with a park in the middle. Um, so thankfully there was plenty of folks out today Met a couple of Americans already, which was fun. Um, met a few pilgrims the last bar there in Navarrete and looking forward to uh, meeting some more folks throughout the day. Buen Camino. So I'm quite sure that the audio on this is gonna be terrible, but I wanted to do a, a truth in advertising moment. You know, so many people talk about how beautiful the Camino is, and it is. Uh, but one of the things that's different about Camino from like, you know, a wilderness trek like Appalachian Trail or something is there's very little road walking here. You can see behind me, lots of road walking. I often say that about a third of the Camino is walking on a road. Now it's not usually walking along a highway like this, um, but there are sections like this too. So anyway, it's part of the deal. Whoa! Whoa! 
Boy and Camino, they're pilgrims. Um, today I'm just starting my second day of walking um, out of Majero. We walked 28k yesterday, um, which was uh, that walk from the Gronio to Majero was uh, not beautiful. It's through mostly kind of city park and stuff, um, but it was a quite easy walk for the first day. Um, so I really uh, it was nice and um, uh, I've got some uh, a couple of great experiences kind of Camino magic happening even in that short trip um, um, these pilgrims that uh, they had created this song they used this song from Europe this child these children sort of uh, sing-along song from Europe that I wasn't familiar with but all the Europeans that were here were familiar with it um, and they had adapted the lyrics about uh, Camino de Santiago very funny uh, kind of rejection of why we're here at all um, and uh, so they f came upon this musician who was just singing along the side of the road and they helped him learn the melody and he then accompanied them as they sang their rendition and it was great uh, but the other thing that was fun is I spent most of the day walking with two Danish uh, women um, young women in their early 20s um, who are walking uh, from St. John and uh, got to know them a bit and share stories about cultural differences and talked about that mostly cultural differences between uh, their northern European country and the United States um, it was just great conversation um, and we ate lunch together and um, and I stayed at uh, a nice alberga kind of off the road uh, off the main Camino in town there at um, Najera and uh, I got to talk for a bit and one of my roommates there and I'd actually met him on the road a bit earlier one of my roommates there was um, Roberto Roberto's from Houston and uh, um, has been in Italy studying uh, for a while, for a couple years, I think. And um, he uh, is here this summer doing Camino. And um, so it was good to, to talk with him and, and um, to be able to learn a little bit about his story. So, yeah, so getting to meet a few folks that um, is part of the reason I love to come out here. Um, and uh, just ready for another day. Some of us, this is the speed of Camino. Today we're only walking 20 kilometers um, and uh, we'll end in Santo Domingo and um, staying at a Donativo Albergue there. Um, they are taking reservations right now because of COVID uh, and I assume that's true of other Donativos. Um, but uh, yeah, so 
looking forward to a nice day. I'm only doing 20 kilometers today, which um, should be quite easy given that I'm in great health right now. So uh, I'll talk to you soon. Pilgrims. So today um, I'm walking out of Santa Domingo and unfortunately for me I guess uh, I'm walking much earlier than I would like to. Uh, there are a couple of older Spanish pilgrims, I think they might have been husband and wife or certainly together, um, that decided to have full conversations at 6 a.m. this morning. So after about 25 minutes of hearing them bang around and talk to each other. I decided to show it and get up. So I'm out here outside of Santo Domingo. Um, Santo Domingo is a kind of a famous little town because of a, 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 a sort of miracle story that's told about the place. Um, there's a German family walking through Santo Domingo many years ago and um, a Spanish girl takes a liking to this German boy and decides to plant silver in his bag when he's not responsive as a uh, punishment, if you will. Feminist critique will have lots to say about that little trope. But, um, but anyway, so the uh, boy is caught with the silver in his bag and is executed. He's hanging in the streets. And the family goes on to Santiago grieving. And on the way home, they return to Santo Domingo to pay respects to their son. And when they arrive, he's fully alive, still hanging from his noose. And, uh, and so he, the, the family goes back to uh, the police officer and says, you know, our boy is still alive. And, and the police officer responds by saying, uh, that boy is no more alive than the chickens on my plate. He's eating dinner. And uh, just as he says that, the chickens on his plate come back alive and fly away. And so, because of this little miracle story, um, they actually keep chickens, two live chickens, in the cathedral. Um, and so, it's a very, interesting miracle story but the thing that's the the true part of um santo domingo that's really fascinating is um, santo domingo is um santo domingo himself was a, sort of an engineering uh person and he was responsible for building bridges and other structures that would help pilgrims make the way um i believe the 11th century so um there's a bridge that goes out of town on the way out of Santo Domingo that he's responsible for. It's been rebuilt um, a couple times in the same style as his bridge. But um, but yeah, so it's, it's a cool town and glad that I got to stay there. Probably the better part of staying there for me was that last night I got to spend um, quite a lot of time with the largest sort of group of pilgrims that have been walking together for instance, since St. John. And um, there's a lot of them that are there together, and they really have a great group and, and lots of laughter. Um, lots of international uh, diversity there. Um, and of course, the, the French and the Italians are arguing over who has better cheese and better wine, uh, which is also very stereotypical. So lots of fun there. Um, and uh, yeah, you can probably see the sunrise coming up behind me here. A beautiful morning out. Um, it is going to get hot later today, so maybe my Spanish friends did me a favor by waking me up early 
uh, I'll get off the road about a half hour before I would have before. So that's nice. Um, but had a nice walk yesterday. Nice time with those pilgrims last night. Um, and uh, and walking today to Bellarado, just I think it's 22 kilometers. Um, so not another, it's not short, but uh, certainly not a long day. And looking forward to uh, another day of Camino. Pilgrims often ask me, or, or wannabe pilgrims, future pilgrims, often ask me about the uh, terrain and the kind of walking path that we're on. And this is a very typical path for Camino. Um, it's hard packed, you can see. Um, sometimes there are roads that are meant for cars and just don't get a lot of car traffic. This one I think is a dedicated walking path, but um, this is kind of, I, th I usually say this is about one third of the Camino are these kind of hard packed um, trails. And then about one third is just walking along the roads in towns and cities. And then I usually say about one third is more like a wilderness hike, you know, a one person wide trail uh, with big rocks and things like that. So it gives you a little bit of idea of some of the typical uh, paths that you'll walk. Their pilgrims. I, uh, I haven't um, filmed very much either yesterday or today. Um, I got to walking with some folks and and uh, just having great conversation and, and so didn't make a lot of uh, footage but um, yesterday I walked primarily with um, uh, Toby from Germany and Theo from France and Monica from Spain. And so many interesting conversations about their careers, about their religious traditions and faith. Um, and uh, really just a great day getting to know them. Um, and then in the late afternoon, uh, they kind of walked on. They, I think they were are a bit ahead of me now. But um, <clears throat> I spent the last couple of hours walking with Maria from uh, Hungary um, and, uh, and then actually this morning we walked for a bit as well um, <clears throat> she's a recent PhD grad who's out on Camino with some time after graduation and um, just a great conversation with her as well about life and faith and and uh, and cultural differences and all these things. So it was really a great time of walking, but that means I didn't make a lot of footage, but we did um, 
walk about 22k yesterday we um, stopped at this beautiful alberga that has um, this swimming pool right outside of it and um, that was a great fun for everybody to sit around and drink sangria and sit in the swimming pool and um, and then we um, this morning we got started pretty early I left about six o'clock this morning um, because we had 30 kilometers to a little town of I believe it's at Agus Agus um, I'll put that up on the screen but um, anyway so we uh, just got done with a climb uh, there was hasn't been any hills really just some rolling hills for most of the last few days and then uh, we had about five kilometers which was pretty steep up out of uh, Villa Mayor Monta de la Oca I think it is or Osa um, yeah so we had a pretty steep up and now we're kind of on the back side of that hill not a lot of uh, pretty landscape in this area um, but it's mostly been shaded right now you can tell I'm out in the sun but mostly been shaded on the climb and there's a lot of pilgrims around you can probably see folks behind me there are folks in front of me as well so lots of people are out and enjoying the walk today um, it is a bit warm but not not so hot that it's uncomfortable um, and I think I have about eight kilometers more and then uh, we'll be stopping for the day so uh, thanks for coming along with me and uh, I look forward to showing you some more video Today has turned to be quite hot. Um, I finished the long stretch over the hill there um, and we stopped at a bar in San Juan and I just had something to eat and something to drink uh, fairly quickly. Uh, not very quickly, <laughs> it took about an hour. Um, but I made myself get up and get moving again even though I I would have been glad to call that done for the day, but I, um, a little earlier I made reservation at the, this one alberga. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and, and go to that one uh, in Aegis. Um, I did this today, uh, actually this is my second day using the umbrella, the sun umbrella. And I will say, I think, it's very, very good. Um, you can probably see here how I've got it attached to my strap. I'll put a link in the description of this video for the umbrella if you're interested. There are a lot of hiking umbrellas available now. Um, I had one from I think it's Six Moon Designs uh, that I, I kind of liked, um, but and it was lighter than this one. But this one is, um, is a little larger which I thought was probably good to have more coverage from the sun and coverage from the rain. Earlier today I was walking through the hot sun this same area um, <coughs> with no shade and um, and it was pretty hot um, and now it's a little later in the day it has gotten a little bit warmer as well and um, and it's pretty good with the umbrella. So 
I will uh, give another update on the umbrella later, but I do think if some of you are thinking about it, um, especially crossing these areas in the Meseta and other places where there's um, no sun protection, it's a pretty good option. So anyway, um, I've got four kilometers that I really didn't want to walk. Um, and you'll notice now that if we look down the way, there's no pilgrims in either direction now. Um, a lot of them are still back at that last bar. Some have stopped for the day. Um, and there are some that have gone on to head. So we were quite bunched up as we went over the hill. Um, and now we're quite spread out. Um, but it's been really fun um, getting to know all these folks that have really built some great relationships with each other. And uh, I'll give an update soon. morning there pilgrims I uh, just started this morning out of August um, I believe that's how it said I had my Spanish friend help me with pronunciation yesterday I might still have it wrong um, but um, we uh, had a great encounter last night um, the caretaker of the church here in this town an older woman I didn't catch her name um, she spoke no English at all, so we were working through the the uh, Spanish-speaking pilgrims. But um, she wanted us to be able to walk through the church, and so she opened it up, and and a group of us kind of walked through this. Um, it was clearly it was a very old church, um, but I couldn't find any information about its age. I may be able to find that on the internet when I get home and post that here, but. Um, I, uh, it was a beautiful old church, clearly years of faithful worshipers there, and um, so that was cool. And it was funny, she, um, she had heard that there was a priest who was walking in this group, um, and so she came asking about me and who I am and, um, and whether I would want to um, say the Mass there. And, uh, they, the Spanish speakers struggled to be able to communicate to her that I wasn't Catholic, that I was from another um, religious tradition. And I don't think she ever really got that because she kept saying, oh, we have priests from America and priests from England and, and all these other places. And she said, if there's a mass, we come even if we don't understand anything that's said, you know. Um, so she really wanted me to, to say the Mass there, but um, we just had to apologize and I explained that I wasn't Catholic, but I'm not sure that she ever understood that. But, you know, it's interesting. I think it's an indication of some of the differences of um, religion here in Spain as opposed to America, that there are not a lot of... Um, different versions of Christianity in Spain that at least that people know well and uh, I remember my first trip here with my wife uh, we were in Pomparada and the customs are a little different of course and stuff and and so we did the thing where you cross your hands I can't do it with both hands with the holding the camera but we did the thing where we cross our hands over our chest which uh, for Americans indicates I can't receive the Eucharist um, either because you're not in right relationship with the church as a Catholic or because you are Protestant or some other faith. And, um, and so we did that. We went up and that should have been a signal 
for the priest to pray for us. Apparently they don't use that signal very often in Spain. And so the priest basically like insisted that we take the Eucharist. And so I, I sometimes joke that uh, Pomferrada is where I became a Catholic. Um, because my wife and I both received the Eucharist after uh, trying to indicate that we shouldn't. Um, so, you know, I think it's a, it's kind of a beautiful thing to see, um, you know, religious difference just not matter as much uh, as it does in America. But, you know, again, uh, there are downsides to that too, that there's just a lot of um, people that just don't understand. And uh, well, we would hope that they would understand more than, than they do sometimes. But um, yeah, so that was kind of a fun encounter last night. This village, I really uh, loved it. It's only about three albergas, um, but uh, was a nice place to stop. It was 22 kilometers from, um, from Burgos. There's a couple routes into Burgos. Um, if any of you, uh, know that whole path um it, the the route into burgos like the path into leon are pretty famous for being uh not fun to walk you're kind of along the side of a road in an industrial area and so on but um there is in my guidebook the wise pilgrim guidebook an alternative route that goes around the airport in burgos um, to the to the left to the south of the airport um, and so I'm going to try to film that today. I'll put that in the video if I can get a good film of it um, so that you can avoid that dirty, uh, not fun section of Camino and you can walk through a park. Uh, so anyway, I hope that you will, uh, that you're enjoying these videos and uh, I look forward to giving more to you soon. With that, I'll give you a little bit of this Spanish sunrise. Just coming up on a kind of a tricky spot. Um, I am coming through a town. I'll put the name of the town up on um, on the screen right now because I am not going to be able to pronounce it well. Uh, I'm walking with Borca here from Pamplona. Hi, to everyone. <laughs> and uh, we're going to look for uh, this place up here just after this town. If you'll notice the town behind me, that'll give you some visuals of where we are um, because many people because many people do not like walking the road into Burgos. It's not very fun. It's kind of dirty and industrial area, but there is an alternative route that will take you down by the river and through the park into Burgos. So I'm gonna take a little bit of footage here to help you to avoid that. So you can see right here that the Camino goes on to the right. <laughs> We're going to avoid that way. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like in August of 2021. It may change, of course, but these apartments, I think, will be an indicator. I think if you went right, right there where I did, um, you're going to end up uh, in the same place in Burgos, but that's the road walk. But uh, this play, this direction is going to take us down by the river and um, through the park. So as we come to this intersection here, You'll see that the main Camino is turning to the right. You'll see arrows to the right. We could go that way, but we're going to go straight through this intersection and continue our river walk.
see a couple yellow arrows going across this bridge here. There were a lot of bridges similar in color uh, up to this point. This one's the one that uh, has the yellow arrows. My guidebook directs me to go a little bit further ahead before I cross the river, but I really think it probably doesn't matter very much because once we're in town, they kind of all go into the same place. morning there pilgrims um, I am just leaving Burgos you can see Burgos there in the background I'm not sure you can even see me in the uh, video but uh, there we go um, it's uh, 6 30 uh, in the morning and I've already had um, the chocolate pastry oh I got forgotten the name of that already um, the croissant with the chocolate in the middle. They're delicious and you, you want to eat them all along the Camino and then when you get home as well. Um, so I had a, a quick breakfast um, at the, fortunately I, I was surprised that there was a um, bar that was open right across the street from the largest alberga in Murgos, which is I'm sure why they are open at six. Um, so far, my experience has been that we haven't had very many albergas open uh, that are open early. So that's a little different than Camino France, Frances would normally be. Uh, in the past, I've usually been able to eat at 6 a.m. if I wanted to. Um, so, uh, just leaving Burgos at 6.30. And um, uh, Yesterday, I spent most of my day walking with Gorka from Pamplona. Gorka is uh, obviously grown up right on the Camino his entire life, and he's walking his first Camino, started in Saint Jean. And um, so it's good to get to know him, and we laughed and talked about culture. He's a, a pastry chef and an um, exercise instructor, Pilates instructor. And, uh, and is making his way to Santiago. And I think um, we will probably, um, we'll probably meet him some more. I think uh, the group that he is with, um, there's about six or seven of them that walked 40 kilometers uh, the day before Burgos to be able to, um, uh, I guess just to get into Burgos earlier and uh, and so they've kind of caught up with the little group that that I've been walking with most of the time. So um, in that group, I've got some new uh, some new folks to get to know. I think I mentioned in my video yesterday morning that um, Mark was in that group as an American from the D.C. area. Um, I think he said uh, he's in Arlington or something, in Virginia. Um, so Mark is, uh, will soon be entering seminary. And then I also met a man named Bert, 
uh, I think his uh, name is Roberto, um, but he is an older gentleman from Texas. So catching a few more Americans in there. Um, and then a great group of international pilgrims as well. Um, Giacomo from Italy and Nora from Italy, who we have uh, given a trail name since her birthday is on the Feast of St. James. Uh, we've decided that she's now Jamie on the trail, which I guess I should say that uh, um, Patrick, our Irish multi-Camino man, has dubbed me Padre, which I think is quite hilarious since I'm not Catholic and spending so much time in Spain. Um, and uh, then Maria is from Denmark, so another Danish uh, pilgrim. Um, and all ages in that group. Um, several of them are younger. Bert is uh, older than me for sure. Um, and Mark is, uh, I would guess, younger as well. I guess he's probably 30 or so. Um, so, uh, great to meet some new pilgrims and uh, looking forward to um, getting to know them better. Today we're walking 30 kilometers out of Burgos, um, entering the Meseta in, in earnest. And uh, so that's one of the reasons that we've gotten up early. It's going to be fairly warm today, about 84 degrees Fahrenheit um, by the end of the day. So it should be a, a good long day. I didn't say this in my last video, um, but yesterday as Gorka and I were walking together, which I should say, we're going to, uh, we made a video teaching the alternative route into Burgos. So those of you who have wondered if there's a way to avoid walking the, the road into Burgos, there is a great way. It's not particularly well marked, but um, I made a video yesterday with Gorka uh, as we walked through the river route into Burgos and it was quite beautiful. Um, so that was nice, but he and I were walking quite fast and I think um, I, I learned, I realized later it was probably faster than he wanted to go because he has some foot pain and, uh, and it probably was faster than I should have gone. And so I've got a pretty bad blister on the back of my heel. It's funny, yesterday um, I was sitting in the in the uh, alberga and I started to uh, notice that there was a, something on my foot and I looked down and it was a blister the size of a quarter. Usually, you have a blister that large, you know you have one because it hurts. Um, but it really didn't hurt very much yesterday. Um, and I thought maybe this morning when I started moving, it would go away, but uh, now it's pretty clear as I've walked, I don't know, a couple kilometers maybe, um, that this blister is gonna be here. And it's not very, it doesn't feel very good. So updates on that soon. <laughs> and uh, I hope that it's not gonna be a, a bad problem today and that I can keep it from getting worse. So part of the Camino. Hello there, pilgrims. I am uh, about 17 kilometers into my walk now. As you can see from the images around, we are clearly into the Meseta now. Just wanted to check in and let you know I was uh, a little worried, worried about that blister this morning, but 
as they often do if you have cared for them the pain of that is gone and uh, I can kind of feel it on my foot but it isn't really a concern at all for walking and so I'm just out here for the heat now uh, I've done 17k I'm going 13 more to Andana and uh, looking forward to to making the way and actually you can just see um, over my shoulder here that we just got a glimpse just this moment of the village of Hornias. It's where I'm going to have lunch and a break before we move on. I'll see you soon. Well, I am on the last um, nine kilometers of my day uh, today out of Burgos and uh, it has gotten very hot. It's about 85 degrees, I think, um, Fahrenheit. And uh, I will say that the umbrella, this is the several days now that I've used the umbrella uh, in the sun and it may be a secret to the Meseta on Camino. Um, I'm actually, even though it's quite hot right now, I'm fairly cool, um, especially because there's some there's some decent breeze. Um, it's not so much breeze that it's blowing the umbrella around, uh, which if it gets too windy, I have had it fold up on me once. So, um, so you know, it's. Uh, it's a nice gift when it's very, very hot out here and I still have quite a, quite a ways to go today. So a couple more hours of walking. Uh, I don't anticipate any uh, concerns, but uh, a couple more hours of walking and then we'll arrive in Antanas. So hope they uh, be able to give you some good views of the Meseta today. Peace. It's been a very hot day. Um, it's about 86 degrees Fahrenheit, I think, today. Um, we've been walking 30 kilometers, uh, about 19 miles or so, I think. Um, and it's been a long day. Uh, it, it, we're in the Meseta now, and so long stretches of 10 kilometers or so without water or stop. And, uh, and honestly, this is one of those days where I'm out here going, why did I ever do this? Why, why do I do it? I've been back multiple times and why do I just keep coming back for something that's actually quite painful and quite hard? And I suppose that part of what makes Camino beautiful and part of what makes it epic are days like today. Cause honestly, it's a day that I'd rather not be out here, but I should say, after walking 30 kilometers, I just walked into my town for the night. It's Antanas. Antanas is kind of hides uh, behind the hill until you're right there. So I'm here now after 30K and I suppose that nothing is broken, nothing is injured. Um, and so after making it, I think these are the days that make that final day walking into Santiago so beautiful.
Vamos a ir Santiago, tomamos tres, cuatro, uno después de otro, ¿vale? Bueno, no hay problema. ¿Todos juntos? Sí. Tres, cuatro chupitos de tequila. Oh, 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 Buenos dias, peregrinos. I am uh, just outside of Hontanas. Um, as you probably have already seen, we had a very long day yesterday. Uh, about 86 degrees Fahrenheit and 30 kilometers. Um, and today, it's gonna be much hotter. Um, it's gonna be about 95 degrees Fahrenheit today, 35 celsius and um we have a 28 kilometer day ahead of us so that's quite a lot um we did get up earlier i got up and was out about um uh, i think i was out a little before six just a few minutes before six and by the time i woke up at 5:40. There was only one other person in my room of six. So, obviously some folks were getting up even earlier. We all have a, uh, the same alberga in mind. Um, just before Fromista, forget the name of the town right now, but, um, so we're headed for our 28 kilometer day out of Antanas, across the Meseta. Um, it's, an, it's very cool this morning, actually. Um, and the walking is beautiful for the moment, but I think we only probably will have about another um, hour and a half or so before um, it starts to get pretty warm. It'll get warm fast today. So I have my umbrella. <laughs> Everyone was very jealous of me yesterday in the, in the alberga. And uh, so I'm gonna have my shade going across this hot day and I'll uh, show you some views too. Last night when I arrived uh, at the alberga, I guess it wasn't last night, it was about 3 or 3.30 yesterday uh, uh, that I finished the long day. And uh, the alberga where I arrived, um, I had my uh, friends who have been, uh, you've seen a couple days ago in the uh, singing that they sang a song along the side of the road, Toby from Germany and Theo from France. And, Monica from Spain and Janina from Germany. And um, so I sat with them for a good long while and that was uh, wonderful. And, and then we got to, um, there was another man there from uh, Pamplona who had lived in America for a while. So his English was very good. And uh, Toby and he were sharing stories back and forth of some of the festivals. So he was uh, sharing with us about the festivals related to San Fermin and in, in Pamplona uh, kind of what it's like to live in that town during San Fermin and um, Toby shared the this uh, festival and ritual um, from his town or nearby town in uh, Germany and so it's really cool to get to hear some of these stories and then I just reflected about how 
few uh, traditions of this kind we have in the United States and that ours are much more geared around sports and things like that since we're just not as old of a country and it makes a difference. And then after I got cleaned up and showered and everything, um, I had dinner there at my alberga uh, and they served paella and uh, a very, very nice salad. One of the best salads I've ever had in, in Spain actually, um, full of vegetables and had uh, dinner with a Fr French woman and a French man. The man, man spoke very little uh, English and the young French woman was uh, uh, translating everything at the table. Um, and then the Spanish man from Pamplona. So we had a nice dinner um, through translations and hearing about the various walks. Um, the French man had been uh, eight weeks already on Camino. He started at his home in France. Um, so anyway, um, great dinner. And then I went down to the bar that was just down from Ara Belga and I joined um, the group that I had met in uh, Burgos. So um, Giacomo from Italy and Nora from Italy and uh, Maria from Denmark and uh, Gorka who you've already met on here uh, from Pamplona and Marco from Italy and um, we sat around for quite a long time and shared stories and and uh, talked about our day and it was quite lovely really um, so really great uh, community great relationships and um, yesterday I think was a very uh, it was a trying day um, for sure because of the temperatures um, but I think everyone was very appreciative of uh, of what they could accomplish. In fact, Nora, Nora is, um, I think, 18 or 19 years old. In fact, I think she is turning, her birthday is uh, St. James Day. I've been joking with her that she should be named Jamie while on Camino, uh, since she shares a birthday with St. James Feast Day. But um, anyway, so she has a birthday this week. Um, but, uh, she was just saying, you know, she was so happy to see what her body could do, um, that what she was capable of as she set out across this difficult day. And I think lots of people have that feeling as they start to realize. In fact, the young French woman who was um, at dinner remarked something very similar about her having walked this far from, from St. John. So, you know, I think people are at a point in their Camino as they set out across the Meseta where they're starting to realize that they can do this. Um, they know it's hard, but uh, really gaining an appreciation for what they're doing and what they're accomplishing. And I think in some ways, maybe the anxiety or the fear starts to fade uh, for those who don't have injuries. Those who have injuries, maybe the fear is more. But, um, I think for at least some that anxiety begins to fade as they start to see what they're able to do. So just a few thoughts for today. Peace. walked um, pretty pretty long already this morning I don't know exactly my distance um, but I have spent actually a very nice walk had about an hour or so that I walked with Elaine from Belgium she's just stopped back there to um, change her jacket out as she climbs the mountain um, 
but uh, a nice talk this morning. And now we have to climb this. The um, maceta is very flat almost throughout, but occasionally you come up to something like this. Pilgrims, uh, I am about one kilometer from our stopping place today, Boadilla del Camino, uh, and it's been a hot day, uh, 95 degrees. The umbrella has been an absolute saver for me. I really appreciate um, the way that's kept me cool, but it's still been a hot day. I drank about three liters of water. So one of the things that um, we've been talking about a few of us is noticing that even though everybody's very tired and um, you know is having a hard time each day in this heat long kilometers long distances um, our group the people that kind of all walk together um, have been remarkably upbeat you know they come into town and and they're exhausted and throw their backpack down and say, oh, where's a beer? I gotta get a shower or something like that, rather than, you know, cursing the Camino, wish they were gone, something like that, which can happen sometimes when, uh, when people are out here and working hard and, and hot and tired and people can be uh, hard on each other. They can be hard on this whole journey. Um, but thankfully that hasn't been what's going around it's a really positive vibe and uh, i think that's a gift that that they are giving to each other and i think some of those more positive pilgrims really help bring the uh bring the beat up in that so i would highly encourage that when you're walking camino that you uh even if you don't walk every day put yourself around and make some friends with some people that are just ultra positive because it's a gift out here so anyway I'm going to just spin it around here so you can see the landscape on the other side. And I think I'll sign off for this walking day. I'll let you see a little bit of our beautiful alberga. We are out on the road again early this morning. I uh, left right at six, I walked out. Um, we had a absolutely beautiful uh, day yesterday um, after we had a, a long hot walk. We got to Boyadillo del Camino on this, at this beautiful albergue with a pool. And uh, we ate great food. The, the uh, pilgrim menu was, was just delicious food. And um, and kind of everybody was staying in the same town together last night that are in the, the kind of two groups that are walking. Um, and just everybody was around the pool and, and talking and so on. And it was really, really beautiful day um, for lots of reasons. But 
Um, anyway, so we are out on another hot day. It's gonna get up to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, 35 Celsius again. Um, and hopefully that'll be okay um, because we're only going 25 kilometers today and um, we'll end in Cardeon de las Condes, uh, which is the last town before the longest uh, dry section with no resources. Um, this morning, we're actually walking behind or alongside of this canal um, that I believe is used for, uh, well, it's used for some water transportation, but also um, is used to irrigate uh, some of the farms in, there, in the area, I think, too. Um, but it's kind of nice just to have a little something different with terrain and have a nice cool breeze this morning. Um, I, this morning, my foot is very, very painful. It's the first day I would say I've had like pain on this trip um and i don't i don't know why it would be different i did walk a long way yesterday the last two days but i don't know it, i thought it would be okay um so got some ibuprofen going and i'm about 40 minutes into the walk to now i think and um it's starting to it's starting to feel a little better um but i'm pretty sure that i've stressed that foot more than it wants uh, so anyway i will give you an update soon and hopefully you can enjoy some of these images of maceda with me Hello there, pilgrims. We are just arriving in Carion de las Condes. Uh, and I'm with some friends, my Italian friends, and my American friend, Mark. Uh, we had a hot day, 26K, but we've been okay, even though I've been miserable, all my entire body hurting. But we are looking for the municipal pool here, and there is some rumor that we may walk tomorrow's walk starting at a, after dinner tonight. We may be walking through the night just for some adventure. We'll see if anybody decides to back out, but right now that's the plan. So anyway, update soon. Well, Buen Camino Pilgrims, we, uh, these are some of my friends. We have uh, three Italians, uh, Spanish, Polish, and me. Um, so we decided we were going to walk out of Carry On de Descondes in the middle of the night. So we left at 12, 1240. Yeah. 12 yeah. We left at 1240 and we're going to walk about 30 kilometers or so. Um, but we are 10 K in. Yeah. And we found a table to sit at and eat some things. So anyway, we're just, by the way, there was no reason for us to do this except for that. Uh, we just thought it would be fun. So. Anyway, and it's been, um, it's so far it's so been fun. fun. Uh, we'll see if we still think so at eight o'clock. So we'll give you an update.
Well, hello there. Um, this is just a quick update. Um, the group last night set out um, in the middle of the night and um, uh, it was a good walk for the part that I was able to do, but the, it did not, it did not last for me. I was able to get, stay with them for the first um, 17 kilometers out of Carion de los Condes um, into the next town. But we had such a pace going uh, that I eventually had to let them go ahead and just um, set my own pace. My legs were just very exhausted from keeping up from keeping up with their pace. So anyway, they went on ahead and uh, I just stopped at a kind of roadside park um, and took a nap just a, a bit ago. And now it's like 8.30 in the morning. Um, and I have gone uh, 23 kilometers, I think. Um, and so I still have like 7K to go this morning, um, which isn't far at all, of course. So I'll still be into um, the alberga by probably 10 o'clock. Um, but uh, it, was, it was not a pace that I could keep up with as an old man with those younger and healthier uh, pilgrims. So anyway, um, you win some, you lose some. I just have to walk in about 7K now. Wonderful. I do have one update that um, for me is a little disappointing and I don't know how many of you were looking forward to me making videos from uh, Santiago during the St. James uh, feast day um, but I was planning on going to Santiago in about two days um, and spending the weekend in Santiago with the St. James Festival, making some videos, recording, and being able to report out on that. Unfortunately, I've now had two reservations for rooms that have been canceled in Santiago um, for this uh, busy festival weekend, um, feast weekend. And so uh, I've just decided I'm gonna go ahead and continue to walk um, down the path Camino Francais. So I'm gonna walk into Lyon. Uh, I will be able to have the feast day in Lyon. My plans to be able to show you some of what's happening in Santiago have been kind of set aside. But let me just tell you, that is a that is a lesson for all of Camino. Um, the reality is Camino plans are always changing. Um, I always think if you put plans, talk about Camino planning, you really should kind of put scare quotes around that and say, look, this is what I might do. Uh, I've some to some of the pilgrims out here will say, this is what I want to do if God wills it or something like that. Uh, you know, if it works out, um, because uh, the reality is sometimes those things change and, and that's going to be the case for me um, uh, this week. So I'm going to be glad to be in Lyon. It's my favorite city on all of Camino Francais. So uh, I'll be able to give some reports from there. Um, we're actually doing something kind of different. Um, normally the distance from Carion de las Condes to uh, Leon would be four days. The group that I'm walking with, several of us has decided we're going to do that in three days. So we did 32 and then um, I think we're going to do a 25 or something like that and then something like 36 to get into Leon. Um, that's pretty long distances. Let me just tell you if you're watching right now and you're like, I don't know if I can walk you know, 30 kilometers. You don't have to do that. Um, usually the guidebooks are going to recommend that you're walking something like uh, 23, 24, 25 kilometers. Um, I happen to be with a group that's walking much further. And I think for me right now, and the fact that it's one of the rare Caminos that I'm here by myself, um, I want, I want the physical challenge of seeing whether I can uh, make the longer distances. And I just so value the relationships of the people that I'm walking with. And so uh, I'm just walking a bit longer than I normally would.
Well, good morning, pilgrims. I have um, just left my hostel this morning in San Nicolas, and it's, I didn't leave until about seven, which is pretty unusual. Uh, part of that is because today was, um, I'm only going 25 kilometers, and the temperature has cooled off quite a bit this week. Um, so I think today it's high as like 28 degrees Celsius, which is something around, um, 84 or something so that's you know that's manageable um but the other reason was because i just had did not feel well this morning at all i don't know if that was because i uh, just am not feeling well have some kind of a virus bug um or if that is um just the weird schedule i kept yesterday with uh walking uh, you know in the morning and not sleeping and all that kind of thing and then so anyway, um, I don't know exactly why, but not feeling too hot today, but got some water going and feeling better now and I'm out on the trail. So anyway, uh, I'm going 25 kilometers today uh, and we'll end about 37 kilometers from Lyon, which is gonna be my last day of walking. And um, therefore I'll go kind of a long 37 kilometers tomorrow um, and finish out my walking in Lyon. There, pilgrims uh, hopefully you can hear okay with that wind I don't have the windscreen on the microphone anymore been lost to the Camino uh, but hopefully you can hear that okay so I am um, about 22 23 kilometers away from Lyon and I don't have a lot of uh, video footage for you for yesterday um, and let me just tell you a little bit about why so I got up in San Nicolas um, yesterday morning and had just a wonderful day. Remember I had the night hike the day before and I got to spend quite a bit of time in San Nicolas having gotten there so early. I had a great day, wonderful food at the alberga uh, and some great conversations with a few friends there. And then um, I got up yesterday morning and uh, was feeling quite sick. Um, I, I didn't know what it was at the beginning, um, and I think I said that in the video. I'll have to look back to remember what I said, but um, yeah, I was feeling quite sick. It became clear to me as I walked and uh, with some things that were going on with my system that it was either um, something that I got in the water or something that I ate. Um, it is possible that when we were walking the night, the night hike, I might have gotten water that was non-potable um, because we wouldn't have been able to see the signs, but there aren't very many non-potable fountains there. So I really think I must have just gotten something bad to eat, even though the food was delicious there and was very sick. And um, so I did walk 18 kilometers yesterday, even with that sickness, which I thought was pretty good actually. Uh, to be able to make the distance, um, 18 kilometers. Um, so uh, I had already made reservations for tonight in Leon. Um, and so I had already made reservations tonight in Leon. And I think I may have mentioned earlier that um, this was a section from Lagronio to Leon that I had never walked. But because my plans got sort of messed up about going to Santiago, I decided this was sort of uh, my opportunity then to have walked the last little bit of Camino Frances that I've not seen. And so um, anyway, with my illness yesterday and the short day, that means today I need to go 45 kilometers um, to get into Lyon. And that's not so bad. 
Um, my feet especially feel great after um, a fairly short day yesterday. And um, I, this morning as I, I left, actually yesterday because I got stalled up, I got to see a couple of folks, um, Noeline from Belgium and Maria from Hungary, who I hadn't seen in several days. And that was great to be able to have a meal with them and walk with them for a bit. And then this morning, I uh, walked with the two of them for part of the morning, most of the morning. And then um, I'm now set out on the last 25 kilometers to Lyon. It's gonna be a bit of a push. And if I have to, I'll take a taxi for the last little bit. I've got a group of folks that I really have gotten to know. Um, in fact, you've seen some of them already in the videos. Um, and uh, they are in Lyon uh, today already. Um, they went ahead and so I'm gonna get there today regardless however if they get there and I want to be able to spend a last time last meal with them and uh, extra special there maybe she'll see this is Nora from Italy is turning 20 years old on st. James birthday tomorrow so she shares a birthday with st. James feast day and uh, so I'm hopeful that we'll be able to celebrate her today um, uh, and be able to to uh, bring her into her 20s uh, on Camino. So anyway, um, I am, uh, like I said, about 22 kilometers outside of Lyon. Gonna try to push and see how I can do. Great weather today. You know, it's been very, very hot across the Meseta. Yesterday, the weather was significantly better I think 28 degrees for the high and today it's only gonna get up to 25 which is about 76 77 degrees I think Fahrenheit and uh, I need it because I'm going a long ways so great weather good morning good uh, good company this morning and now I'm uh, gonna finish out the rest of my the last miles of this Camino for me uh, by walking into Leon hopefully I'll be able to show you how that goes, peace. Well, that wasn't easy. Um, I'm about one kilometer from the bar where some of my uh, Camino friends are eating, which is maybe another half kilometer from the cathedral. And I'm very, very tired. I did 45 kilometers. Um, I've never gone that far before. Uh, but I made it. Fortunately, the weather was really good today that helped make it possible. But truly, the other thing that made that possible was um, about nine kilometers from here, I was exhausted. I was really just trying to keep my feet moving because I wasn't making very much progress. And I came upon Michaela, who's an Italian woman 
who I've only barely talked to at all. She's been walking with one of the groups that I walk with, but she's been gone for a few days and, and hadn't really talked with her anyway. So we got to talking and she's very strong. She was at the end of a long day too and she was able to keep going and uh, I was just able to keep up with her, sort of. And um, she, um, she and I just had some conversation about what our work worlds are like and what she's doing and the new dreams that she's pursuing. And, uh, and that was a bit of a Camino angel for me because those last nine kilometers uh, seemed pretty daunting. And uh, we walked together for seven of them and it was not so bad. So we do this together, friends. Some of you wonder if you can come on Camino alone and I'll suggest that you will never be alone here even if you choose to be solitary sometimes. You're never alone and I'm thankful for my uh, little Camino angel today and uh, thankful for walking a very long walk. second Camino. Um, my first one was students. I remember being on the airplane and just crying for for hours, quite literally hours on the way home thinking about um, the relationships that are formed and the ones that will never be the same again because we'll never be on the way in that in that way again. Um, and you know I, I really have felt the same way about this pilgrimage. I think about the the great friends that uh, I've been able to make, the connections that I've been able to make, um, people that I really, uh, I hope that I'll get to stay in touch with for a long time, but the reality is, um, you know, maybe it won't happen with most of them even. And maybe one or two that you, that you really connect with, that you stay in touch with longer, but for so many of us, we're not gonna be able to maintain these Camino friendships over the long term. And that, I think for me, is the hardest part, is coming home, coming off the trail and losing that pattern of of just waking up and, and eating a bite and, and getting on to the walking, um, coming, returning from that to the, the, the grind of everyday life, the, the realities of our, of our work and our, um, our just personal responsibilities. Um, but then to, to walk away from these relationships that have meant so much to us while we're on the trail and to now, um, uh, return to to our normal life and 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 maybe for many of those people never see them again um, and and maybe for a few of them only see them rarely so for me 
definitely the hardest part has been uh, lots of sadness as I've gotten off the trail. Uh, I was actually said goodbye to my friends, my Camino friends, um, a couple days ago. Um, and uh, and now getting ready to uh, to board a plane in just a few minutes, and uh, and for sure I can say that that this is the hardest part of a pretty challenging Camino.